Greetings, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Sons of Us podcast, hosted by Irene. Greetings. And Ben Sutif Jr. We just thankful to God once again, give him all the praises, the honor, and the glory that we're able to come before you with thought provoking, mind percolating, and creative content every single week around the concepts of the circle of love, where we focus on God, marriage, family, and life. Yes. As we continue to focus on marriage, we've been in marriage for a couple months now, mm -hmm. and we've been having this exciting time talking about exactly. different topics regarding marriage, about praying for your spouse's emotions and praying for your spouse's uh, mood swings. And, yes. And then praying, we talked about uh, 70 times seven, which is forgiving, praying for forgiveness. My God. And now <laughs> we're going to start off with a new topic right. this week is marriage frustration. Uh -huh. Marriage frustrations, and we're still taking excerpts from Stormy on Martin's book, given to us by our dear friends uh, Sean and Marshall mm -hmm. Britton, who we fellowship with and, and counseled in the Bay Area in California. So we just thankful to God once again to come before you on this day. Yes, thank you once again, and special thanks to Reverend Langston. And I'm sure First Lady is probably already uh, on, on tap as well. But we thank you guys for tuning in yes. all the way from California. IA. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but before we get started, uh, we always want to give a shout out to our fellow podcasters. And of course, our son, Ben Sutter III, Mr. Podcaster himself, who got us started on this trail of podcasting. Right. Uh, it's all about ministry. It's still all about ministry. And uh, our son features our podcast along with so many others around the topics of sports, music, life, comedy, society, culture, movie reviews. You'll see some of that and relationships. Yes. And we are all distributed under the archway of BS3 Radio, where you can find us on Facebook, on Twitter, on IG, uh, YouTube, wherever you can find your podcast uh, aired and viewed, uh, you can find us there. Yes. And if you happen to be interested in uh, coaching or being coached into uh, the podcasting arena, our son offers a coaching opportunity and uh, the, that information can be found at uh, BS3 coaching dot square dot site and that is scrolling on your screen and of course you can find us on all social media platforms uh but we'd like to know you to know that we're also on iheart radio amazon podcast as well as apple podcast so uh let's get started in our new topic on today that is real talk marriage <laughs> frustrations Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So we're going to start off with A, which is priorities and marriage frustration. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, society expects a lot out of women. Society also okay. expects a lot out of men, mm -hmm. too, but in a different way. Mm. For an example, men have more pressure than women when it comes to providing for the family. Right. A woman may help provide for her family, but the expectations are not ultimately on her to do it. Even when a woman is a sole provider for her family, hmm. if she doesn't make as much money or she's not getting a great promotion or becoming successful in her field or be able to perform at a high level in the midst of of racism, mm. discrimination, <laughs> drugs, alcohol, and the gun-infested society that we live in, mm. no one thinks less of her. But a man, on the other hand, is not allowed that much flexibility. Wow. So that's one of the reasons, one of the reasons that so many Black men collapse under the pressure mm. of failing in this society that we live in. But no matter how much a wife contributes to the family income, even if she's the only one working, mm. providing for the family, and the husband's at home taking care of the children, 
She mm -hmm. still is here responsible for the children, how well they do socially and academically. Right. Above all, she will be held accountable to be a great wife, a great mother, a great daughter, That's a true. great sister, a great friend and neighbor. That's true. You know, sometimes your wife may feel the pressure of, of so many expectations at once that it overwhelms her. Mm -hmm. And it makes her less effective in getting done what she needs to do. Wow. She may even get discouraged and short circuit. Mm. Understanding all of this will help you pray for your wife, who's your partner, your friend, and your confidant. Yes. Pray that God will bring order in her life so that she may experience joy and peace in the midst of all that she has to do. My, my, you see, the absence of joy and peace in either one of us mm -hmm. directly affects our marriage. It sure does. And causes frustration. Yes. Another one of those great pressures on a woman is that of creating and maintaining a pleasant, inviting, clean, attractive, nurturing, safe haven of a home for her family. Uh -huh. You know, a man may actually be involved in, in making a nice place to live and, and keeping the place safe. But the trial that a woman feels is totally different than what the men feel. Mm -hmm. And when a woman feels insecure about her ability to create a comfortable and inviting home, or well, she has limited time, resources, and finances to do so, mm. the home then becomes a source of uneven ending pressure on her, mm. which is not what we need for our wife to be under. No, no, no additional unending, uneven pressure. Exactly. So your wife mm -hmm. may be far above perfection, but she may even be getting upset. I mean, far below perfection. She may not be perfect. <laughs> she may be far below perfection. Ooh, thank you for correcting that. <laughs> but she may even Ooh. sometimes get upset than you do, more upset than you do, mm. when the family members don't clean up after themselves. My God. Now, now let me say this. Let me just stop right here for a minute. And let me just, we're going to stay always. We're going to be forthright. <laughs> we're going to always be honest and we're always going to be transparent. So before we go any further, let me just say this. It's very hard for me. See, because in our house, I'm the one with the cleanliness paranoia. <laughs> you know, my responsibilities. Sometimes I get obsessed about the cleanliness of the house hmm. because my responsibility is to making sure the house is clean, making sure that uh, the home that needs to be fixed, things will get break or fixed, making sure the trash is taken out, <laughs> making sure the clothes are washed in the home. And I don't have a problem doing it, but sometimes it becomes an ex obsession of me with keeping everything clean, even now with grandchildren in the house. And if you have any children, any children, five, six, seven or under, you know what I mean. But my wife always tells me, she tries to, she pulls my coattail and she tries to always encourage me to, to sit down and take a break. That is not that serious. Yeah, right. But sometimes I have a problem letting go because mm -hmm. I want things clean. I want things in order. Mm -hmm. I want things done in a, in a fashion to where we don't have to worry about attracting little critters in the house. Right. But my wife, because of her condition, she handles a lot of responsibilities, like mm -hmm. those of the house finances, keeping a record and, a, and an excellent filing system for all of the household maintenance and historical investments and property requirements, along with mm -hmm. cooking and cleaning the kitchen and washing dishes occasionally. And taking care of me, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but each couple, each couple okay. should have their assigned responsibilities and take care of them consistently. Right. 
which takes away some of the frustration off of your partner. That's or right. when you invite someone over to dinner mm. at the last minute without mm -mm. announcing it or notifying your wife. She may get irritated about that, brothers. Mm -hmm. Not because she doesn't want to see the person, <laughs> but because when the house is not guest ready wow. or the dinner is not guest quality, That's right. she feels that she is going to be on the one on the hot seat and she's going to be judged for it. And for many a women, like my wife, hmm. setting a fine table and serving great food is something that gives her a sense of accomplishment and fulfillment. That's right. She is robbed of this chance to do as well as she knows how to do by the element of surprise. Mm -hmm. That's why communication with your wife yes. is crucial. Yes, key. Communication about everything. And like Betty would say on Welcome Home, Roscoe, everything, mama. That means everything <laughs> right. needs to be communicated with your wife. Right. I'm talking about two or three times a day, either through face-to-face -face conversation, That's phone right. call, texting, FaceTime, uh -huh. email messages. We have so many ways to communicate in this age. Mm -hmm. We don't have an excuse. That's right. Because like she says, communication is key. And we have to make sure the lines of the communication are always open. Always. You know, the Bible says it's futile to try to establish a home without asking God to build it. Mm. Taking care of home includes countless small tasks that have to be done again and again. And I know it gets monotonous and I know sometimes <laughs> it gets tiring and boring. But some tasks, even though they are menial, they that we have to do, we got to think about asking God to be in the midst of them. Mm -hmm. But he will enlighten our load. He will lighten our load if we yoke up with him That's in right. all that we do. One of my favorite scriptures is Psalms 127.1. It says, mm -hmm. except the Lord build the house, That's they right. labor in vain that built it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. Hmm. And another one of my favorite scriptures is Matthew 11, 28 to 30. It says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's right. He said, take my yoke upon you. Thank you, Lord. And learn of me, hmm. for I am meek and lowly in heart. Mm -hmm. You shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, most women have life outside of housekeeping. <laughs> and they would like to live it, brothers. <laughs> it would take some of the pressure off of your wife or your significant other if you would pray that the burden of caring for the home would be lifted. The burden would be lifted. Mm. Praying that she remember to put God first. Yes. Take time for you. Balance her time with the children or in our case, the grandchildren. Right. And take indeed time for herself. Right. Don't hesitate to ask God what you can do to lighten her load as well. That's it. We have to help out around the house, brothers. Help her in creating a warm and an inviting home. Keeping a home can be a very thankless job for a woman, especially if no one is, well, thanking her. Mm. So remember to show her how much you appreciate all that she does in the home. Mm. She needs to know that, that you approve and that you will not thoughtlessly increase her workload. Mm. Each of us needs to encourage our wives, thanking her for doing such a great job, thanking her for taking care of the kids or the grandkids, thanking her for cooking a great meal, mm. and thanking her for being your wife are words that cannot be spoken enough. My wife always likes to thank me for the things I do. And what it does, it makes me feel proud to be her husband. Hmm. That's why I like to thank her so hopefully she feels proud to be my wife. Wow. And let her know I don't take anything for granted. We have to accept the fact that we are blessed to have each other. That's right. In addition, we must each pray for our wife to seek God and hear from him. Mm. 
-hmm. on what he has given her to do. If we don't pray, we can short circuit the path and the priorities that the Lord has for her. Mm. Praying and supporting God's purpose in my wife helps clear a pathway for her to be effective. That's good, yes. Point B, desires in a marriage frustration. In setting priorities, a woman will generally put everything and everyone before herself. First, that's right. That's just her nature. She's a nurturing creature mm -hmm. and she does whatever she needs to do, go out of her way to make sure everyone is taken care of. But this can create, unfortunately, when we look at it, a constant drain on her that may not be noticeable until one day she cracks like a bone that has been drained of all of its calcium. Mm. If she is constantly doing for everyone else and never taking time for herself to do what her heart desires, it will deplete her emotionally and physically. Yes. Eventually she will not have anything to give. So pray for her to take time for herself. It, it will not make her self-centered. It will make her God-centered. Wow. It is very difficult for, for a woman to find the right priorities for her life when, when so many things are pleading for her attention. Mm -hmm. Your wife or significant other desperately needs your prayers. And if you have been one of those who have passed judgment on her and pronounced sentence, mm. I'm sure you did it without malice or a forethought. Retract your charge, exonerate your wife, <laughs> and refuse to allow any further miscarriage of justice. Hmm. Serve notice on the enemy that your wife has been pardoned by the ultimate judge, yes. the highest legal authority in the universe. Hmm. And therefore, he has no jurisdiction over her. That's good. Her testimony of God's grand acquittal in her life will assure that other law-abiding women that they too can be free of the rule of high expectations. Hmm. Chains have been broken. <laughs> She's no more bound and in bondage because of what society expects of her, because you have interceded for her. And because of your intercession, she has been set free. Then pray that God will reveal to your wife or significant other what priority should be. As we, whether, <laughs> whether our wife can achieve this perfect balance, the jury is still out, but God is the judge who makes the final judgment. Uh -huh. He's the one that sits high and looks low. And his decision is not guilty. My case is closed when it comes to taking care of your wife. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Let me give you a couple more scriptures. Psalms 27 and 4 says, One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold of the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Psalms 37, 4 and 5, another one of my favorites. I like to share this with my daughter all the time. <laughs> Delight thyself also in the Lord. Yes. And he shall give thee the desires yes, of thine he heart. Will. Mm. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. So we have to respect our wife's relationship with our Heavenly Father and allow her to fulfill her God given purpose. Mm. We have to assist her, not get in her way. When we do this, our home and marriage will be blessed. I'm a witness. <laughs> I'm not talking about something I heard or something about something I read. I'm talking about yes, something I Lord. have experienced. Mm -hmm. If we just step back and give our wife room to fulfill her God-given purpose, then the entire household will be blessed. You know, everyone has dreams. Mm. Some of them come from our flesh. But many of them are put in our hearts by God. It eventually, the important to know 
which is which. Mm. Because, it, it, because it is miserable when we mistake our own dreams for his dreams. Mm. When we pursue our own dreams and make idols out of them, we become unfulfilled. And when we don't pursue the ones he gives us, we become bitter. Mm. It's not that God doesn't want us to dream. He does. God says we can't live without a dream or a vision. Wow. So without vision, the people perish. That's right. But he doesn't want us to leave him out of our dreams or our vision. And if the dream we are dreaming is not from the Lord, we will forever be frustrated mm. by the fact that it will never be realized. He wants us to surrender our dreams, our desires to him. To him. When we do that, it will seem as if they are completely dead, but God will resurrect the ones that are from him and release us from the ones that are not. Oh, yes. My God. It's amazing how we can live in the same house with a person year after year and never know the deepest desires of yeah. his or her heart. Mm. And all because we don't ask. Hmm. Oftentimes, dreams and desires are so deep that we don't even verbalize them. Or we believe that the possibility of them ever happening is so remote that we lose hope. That's why communication is key. Sometimes we can encourage our husband or our wife to continue to pursue their dreams, to motivate them and not only pray with them, but verbally encourage them. Sometimes the answers to life's frustrations mm. are so simple. Mm -hmm. As simple as having a loved one encourage her or him about their dreams right. and then praying it into existence or completely out of their life. Mm -hmm. Brothers, if you want to have a happy and fulfilled wife, if you want to have joy that's always around you, <laughs> Ask her if there is a dream deep within her, deep within her heart mm. that she longs to see fulfilled. Then listen openly as she describes it without judgment, no condemnation, no lecture on why it's not possible. That's good. Then pray for her to be able to surrender it mm. to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And when she is able to surrender her dream to God, he will either take the dream and that desire for it away from her or else bring it to full fruition in his way and in his time. Either way, she will find peace. Mm -hmm. So as I close, if the dream your wife shares with you is of the Lord and he opens a door, mm. encourage her to walk through it. If her dream is not of God, he will use your prayers to release her into something far better and more rewarding for her and for you. Wow. He really <laughs> broke that down. I appreciate uh, all that was shared. And um, as we continue on, I, I was thinking this week, although we've been married for almost 39 years, we right. still realize and experience the real truth and challenges of marriage, just like everybody else. Right. You know, those truths meaning we know marriage can be frustrating. It can be rewarding, draining, joyful, demanding, uh, funny, sad, right. exciting, disappointing, and just way too many expectations that are un sometimes unrealistic. Right. And we have had and still have all of those marital seasons and experiences. Uh, I know that that may seem a little strange for some, but the <laughs> S in Sutter does not mean that we're spared. We are not exempt. Although those on the outside looking in sometimes thinks we have the perfect marriage uh, and that we've got it all together, but we are not spared. We go through a lot of uh, the same issues that most married couples do. Right. And in fact, there are some necessary adjustments that we have to make, you know, on a regular basis as an investment into our lifelong journey and commitment together. Mm -hmm. So uh, each spouse 
we've all got to make that personal adjustment right. while entering into marriage. And even once you've entered in it, it's a consistent thing that we have to do. Right. Uh, you can't possibly think as newlyweds that you can bring your singleness into a twosome covenant. No. no. <laughs> you definitely need to make changes, make adjustments to make your marriage work. Right. And it also requires a change in the way you think. Where previously it was I, me, and mine, right. but now it's we, us, and ours. Mm -hmm. So wives, we're going to talk about some quick fixes and some attainable adjustments that we can implement right away in our marriage. Now, one of the common frustrations in marriage is ma managing expectations right. and keeping them free of, get this, personal, emotional, and selfish motives. Mm -hmm. Communication, consideration, finances, chores, and intimacy are often at the top of the list right. of things that bring about frustrations in marriage. Mm -hmm. And uh, communication is so key, as we talked about earlier. Uh, we got to communicate and collaborate with each other throughout the day. Right. Believe me, that helps to eliminate a lot of frustrations and it helps to bring forth some intimacy in the evening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So ask each other for help when the load becomes unbearable. Uh, be proactive versus reactive mm -hmm. and then share the load and spend time with each other once things are done. Our wives, I know we want things done a certain way and you know, we've got to learn how to kind of let go of that perfectionist uh, in us and then delegate and share the load. Um, some of the ways that we do that, you know, and we've done in the past is, you know, can I put a load in the wash before going to work? And then or perhaps at lunchtime, if you're still working at home, and then the spouse can maybe fold and put them away. Again, that's sharing the load. Right. Or else, you know, I'll set out some meat at, for tonight and then maybe the husband can, you know, start dinner. Maybe not my husband, but somebody <laughs> else can start dinner. He can make a mean omelet, though. Uh, better yet, but I, you know, you might can prepare the crock pot. Maybe he could put it on or watch it throughout the day. You know, clean up, you know, so that the weekend is not so consumed with having to clean up. And then you're frustrated. I worked all week and I got to clean up all weekend. So, you know, if, if it's if it's at all helpful, perhaps you could do a little bit every day. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, sometimes you can ask your husband, you know, to sweep or to mop or do things like that to avoid, again, all of that being done in the weekend. Mm -hmm. So, but finances. Uh, but before I go there, basically, it's just that, you know, we have to ask each other as spouses, what can we do to help our family, our household and each other mm -hmm. on a daily basis? Right. And then finances or the lack thereof can bring about a lot of frustrations. Mm -hmm. But again, you and your husband has to communicate about, you know, any major purchases and agree on savings and investments so that you will be prepared for a rainy day. Because when that rainy day comes, right. those frustrations are going to come with it if the money is not there. Mm -hmm. And so then avoid spending like you're still single <laughs> with right. no consideration of your spouse. That can be very frustrating. We went through that. And believe me, if you're handling the finances or if you're not and it's time to pay the mortgage and there's no money, then there happens to be a problem. And then priorities is also one of those frustrations. Every wife that is married to a God fearing man as a follower of Christ automatically knows that God is first. And then her husband definitely comes right after that in second place. And now that, you know, uh, as a wife, you want to be in that position as well, right? right? But believe me, if our husbands does not feel that he is a priority in our lives, then he, he won't have an incentive to make you or as his wife a priority. So we have to uh, give what we want in order to get what we want. And so now, you know, I know that wives, we all have full responsibilities, interest and commitment. We've gone through this many a times, uh, you know, the home, the husband, work, church, children, girlfriends, you know, projects, activities in the midst of all that occupies our time. We are still obligated that our husbands do not feel like 
they are being rejected or at the bottom of all of the things that we have to do. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I realized the huge load that we have on us. But again, wives, our husbands are our ministry. They are our ministry. One scripture that I'd like to bring up is 1 John 3, uh, verse 18. And it says, our love should not be just words and talk. It must be true love, which shows itself in action. Now, marriage will force you to reprioritize and make much needed adjustments. And in order to make those adjustments gracefully and successfully, you will be uh, required to remove the the selfishness from the marriage. You have to become unselfish. Mm -hmm. In fact, learning to be unselfish is probably one of the greatest lessons God wants us to learn in marriage. So selfishness has a crippling effect on marriage. Believe me, that was a big hurdle for us as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a, a baby of six. And of course, got everything I wanted and everything I didn't want. I got it anyway. And then my husband was an only child. So we came up with this cute little equation that says selfishness plus selfishness equals compromise. You've got to give. You've got to take. You've got to agree to disagree sometimes. And then you've got to accommodate. So think about what your spouse needs. Uh, the Bible says, don't look out only for your own interest, right. but take an interest in others too. And that other person is first and foremost, your spouse. Right. That's in Philippians verse two, uh, chapter two, verse four. And sometimes the longer you're married, the less you think about your spouse's needs. And that's right. unfortunate because that's a life lifelong commitment and they should always be uh, at the forefront of your mind. So we have to submit to each other. We talked about that earlier. Uh, The Bible calls spouses to submit to each other, to give up Mm -hmm. what you really want in order to meet your spouse's needs. Mm -hmm. And for Ephesians 5 and 21 says, honor Christ by submitting to each other. And some men think that their wives should be, uh, should make all of the adjustments in the marriage. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's unfortunate. And I'm glad that I have a husband that doesn't think that way. Uh, But as leaders of the home, husbands are required, they're called to lead the way in sacrificing and making adjustments. Mm -hmm. So making adjustments in little things really make a difference. And again, cuts down on the frustrations. And maybe it means listening when your spouse just needs an ear, not for you to say anything, Mm -hmm. but just to let her know that you're there. And also he wants you to, you know, you to know wise that you're there for him as well. Real love is expressed through those small daily decisions to adjust and to meet each other's needs. And the test of real love isn't in what you say, it's Mm. in what you do. All right. Yeah. So greeting each other in the morning, first thing in the morning, that's what we do. We, we greet each other. It doesn't matter. You know, we, we roll over and say, good morning. (laughs) Um, and then we, you know, we did when we worked, we departed with a hug and a kiss and, right. you know, prayer for safety, protection, productivity, and a sound mind in that right. workplace. Right. So it's okay that you do that, that you pray over your spouse, that you ask each other, is there anything that you would like me to do today? Or is there anything I could pray about, you know, or anything for us that you'd like for me to do? And then throughout the day, midday checkups, right. you know. Right. Uh, check in to see how things are going, you know, uh, making sure that there's balance between work mandates and home mandates, right, you know, right, right. all of the communication with your spouse uh, reminds them that they are at the top of your list mm-hmm. and daily surprises. Like we used to always say, I got the mail, so you don't have to stop. <laughs> you know, that made a difference after a hard day. You know how you got to go to the, to the cluster of mailboxes and, and get out of the car and get the mail um, oh, I, you know, my husband was good at this. I, I'll, I'll draw you a hot bath and massage your feet when you come home. I'm like, <laughs> wow. You know, I, I tell you that makes a difference. So yeah. wives think yeah. of ways that you can, you know, go above and beyond, uh, your, your mood or your day mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, relieve some of the stress from your husband. And again, believe me the checking in with you, each other during the day, really, relieves the stress and the frustration for when you come home. You've already kind of communicated and talked about some things 
But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we would always sit down and, and chat. You know, how was your day? Right. Is there anything that, you know, is really bothering you? But if you're really connected to your husband, wives, you can tell when they're when they're bothered by something. Mm -hmm. So you might have to pull it out of them and and ask, how can I pray for you for tomorrow's journey? Because it may not be uh, an easy an easy day for him the next day. Right. And then make your marriage a priority. And, and that means to invest in your marriage, you know, to walk the talk and right. make things happen by getting it done. And we got to do that by getting out of our comfort zone zone. Right. And we have to be each other's lover, cheerleader, mm -hmm. confidant. And as my husband says a lot, best friend. Best friend. So it. priorities in marriage have to do with the position of your heart. Right. It has a lot to do with your heart. A lot of times you, I'm not doing that for him. You know, um, I, I love preparing my husband's plate, even though, you know, right now I'm struggling with a bad knee. I can still get up and prepare his plate and put it on the table with with his silverware mm -hmm. and his glass of whatever he wants to drink. I don't have a problem in doing that. been doing it all my life. Uh, I've been with him since I was 15. Mm -hmm. So that's all my life. So <laughs> if there are some frustrations in your marriage, you know, repositioning your heart. Right is so important because it causes you to want your husband to love you more. You definitely need to love your husband more. Give what you want to receive and you will get what you want. You have to really uh, show that love regardless of what you receive. You know, that's the right thing to do. So prayer plays a key role in your marriage. And if you want results, a changed heart or loving spouse, Pray that God will help you right. and your husband to get your priorities in order right. uh, and pray for a touch. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes uh, we need multiple touches from the Holy Spirit. It's right. OK. That's you know, it. that's what he's there for, mm -hmm. to fill you both and to then to provide love and strength, and wisdom, right. direction, insight, counsel comfort mm -hmm. and peace. Yes. Now, don't be selfish because if you pray and, and God speaks and he tells you to reprioritize your schedule okay. or reset your mind or even eliminate something from your to-do list All or right. your schedule, All right. All right. you can't get an attitude because once you pray, you got to be receptive of mm -hmm. whatever God has mm -hmm. to say and what he has in store for you. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you do want to walk in obedience. There is a saying that obedience equals blessings. And that's what we want in our marriage. We want blessings for our husbands right. and we certainly want blessings for ourselves. But if your husband is blessed, wives, you are blessed, are blessed. because you are one. That's right. So we do. We don't want our husbands frustrated because we will also be frustrated. So right. we want to avoid making our spouse feel like he or she has to strive for our attention. Mm -hmm. Or to compete, God forbid, against other people. Uh, so purposely, you got to watch, you know, the the interaction that you have with others and make sure it doesn't impact your marriage. Mm -hmm. But you have to make your husband feel like he's number one. <laughs> he's number one. He's king. Mm -hmm. OK, so here's a love dare challenge that I, you know, I want to challenge us all this week to take some time this week or this weekend okay. to make some adjustments. Let me just say one adjustment. Mm -hmm. Let's start with just one. And you know what that is. I can't tell you what that is. Um, and then share with your, your husband what that adjustment is going to be mm -hmm. and perhaps encourage him to ask or, or to make an adjustment as well. Right. And then further, the further step for you wives is to acknowledge and appreciate when your husband does that, make that adjustment okay. um, and just acknowledge him and, and really, you know, kudos to him <laughs> for making that adjustment. It's not going to always be easy. You know, change is not always easy for some people. And then lastly, we pray each week's episode really blesses you right. and that it inspires you. Um, no, we don't have it all together. And no, we, you know, we don't really proclaim that our marriage is all of that in a bag of chips. <laughs> we have challenges right. and uh, we're all on and frustrations <laughs> and we're all on this life journey together as right. husband and wife. Mm -hmm. So we have had very few godly married couples early on in our marriage to really pour into us. We were fumbling and just making mistakes after mistakes after mistakes. But 
we had that foundation in God and we thank God that he guided us and he kept us uh, and helped us to recover from it. We did get some good counseling along the way. Um, So in this episode, that's all that we wanted to share as husband and wife, uh, that when you make some necessary adjustments and prioritize each other while depositing and investing into your marriage, this is an investment. It, It is a lifelong investment. And that when you keep trusting our capable God that can do any and everything that we may not be able to do. Uh, There is nothing that you and your spouse and God cannot work out. We are witnesses of that. So we uh, pray God's blessings over you, over your marriage. We pray that you have been blessed. Amen. Amen. Whoa. Wow. What (laughs) what an awesome uh, episode. 21. Right, 21, 21. say Episode season 21. two, 21. And uh, we're always transparent and honest. This has been one that has really touched our hearts, yes, and has definitely encouraged us in the midst of preparing to present it to you. We're still learning, <laughs> none of us have arrived, we're still striving for that level of perfection, exactly. And uh, and God is truly blessing us. We just want to thank. My brother, Roy Rogers, once again, he tunes in every week. God bless you, my brother. And and my brother, Pastor Langston, we thank God for him. And he made a comment. He said he's the one that keeps everything clean in his house as well. And everything needs to be neat and in place. And and he he feels my pain. This is sister. Okay. (laughs) She's using his tag. Uh, (laughs) So so, so they're they're loving together. I understand. So she does that. Okay. But uh, so she understand what I'm saying as well. I see she tagged it, Sister mm-hmm. Langston, at the end. So yeah, I feel you. I feel your pain. You know, I'm there <laughs> right here with you. I'm there with you. But uh, but we thank you all for tuning in, mm-hmm. and we just uh, so excited at what God is doing, and and because of that, we have always end with a scripture, and we want to give you uh, first scripture is John eight. 35, 36, mm-hmm. John 8, 35, 36. And it says, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, he shall be free indeed. Mm-hmm. And Hebrews 3 and 4 says, for every house is built by some man, but he that build all things is God. Yes. So thank you for tuning in once again. We pray that you have a blessed weekend and take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Be blessed. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.